Hi again, this is Dr. Ruscio. This video on, on viruses I recorded a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and my opinion on, on the issue of, of viruses has evolved a bit since, so I just wanted to quickly provide you with that. This video by, uh, or the, the article that I review in the video uh, by Pender is a very interesting video showing some very interesting mechanism and association data. One of the things that you've likely heard me talk about is not solely making clinical decisions based upon mechanism or association data. And what we really want to evaluate, the, the best indicator uh, for doctors and patients to know if a treatment will have any benefit or not is the clinical outcome data. So um, in looking at a couple things you know, th th over the past, there's, there's a few reflections for you. One, when I've looked at the definitional or the, when I've taken a little bit more of a, a, of a strict definition protocol for whether or not Epstein-Barr virus is positive or not, really looking at that early antigen uh, fraction, I find not as many patients uh, are positive for reactivation as I previously thought. Um, the other and more important is what kind of response do patients notice when being treated for Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. And I would say the majority do not notice a lot of benefit. Um, some do, but I've been a little bit disappointed in the fact that it, it hasn't, the, the, the response hasn't been highly consistent. In fact, I would say I've observed more patients have seen minimal to a, a non-appreciable response than patients have noticed a response. Uh, I also think that part of the reason why people may respond to these antivirals, the natural antivirals that is, which is primarily what I use, is because many of the natural antivirals are also antifungal. Uh, some can also be antiparasitic, uh, antibacterial. And so it may be that spillover action having another benefit potentially on an imbalance in the gut. So um, I do think there's a time and a place for treating latent viruses. And like I said, some patients do respond. But because it's not the majority, I tend to be a little bit more judicious in this, um, in this treatment, and I tend to reserve it for patients that have already gone through other treatments that are a bit more well-established. This would, of course, include diet, lifestyle, anything involving their gastrointestinal system, their gut, um, potentially looking at a thyroid evaluation and going through responsible thyroid treatment or support. Um, and then this would be one of the things that I would look at uh, next. So still can be important, still has its time and its place, but if you're a patient out there wondering where this fits in with a thousand things you could potentially do, I would put it a little bit toward the end of the list rather than the beginning. And hopefully, if you do a good job with the beginning of the list, you don't have to work your way toward the end. So in any case, I hope this is helpful. Thanks.